Hello guys, in this video we're going to make an AI state machine that will select a state, run the logic, and then change to another state when the logic has been performed. So, let's right click, and I'm going to create a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call this script state, and this will be the base class for all of our states, so our states will inherit from this class. And because of that, I'm going to make it abstract, which means we cannot use it, we can only use classes that inherit from it. So up here I'm going to say abstract class state and I'm going to make a public abstract state. I'm going to call this run current state. Basically, this will be a function that will return a state, and we're going to have some logic in there in our future scripts. Okay, so now we have our base class created for our states. Let's save that, and now let's create our actual state machine. So let's right click, and I'm going to create a new script. I'm just going to call this state manager. Okay, now let's open that up. I'm going to erase the start functionality, but I am going to keep the update method. Now below the update, I'm going to make a function. I'm going to call it private void. I'm going to say run state machine. And this will be our actual state machine. So it's very simple. First, I'm going to make a variable of type state. I'm going to call that next state. Then I'm going to go up here and make a variable of type state. I'm going to call that current state. Now think of this variable, current state, as the state that we're going to play in our state machine. So state next state equals current state question mark dot run current state. And all that question mark means is if the variable is not null, then run the current state. If it is null, ignore it. Then right below that, I'm going to say if next state does not equal null, then I'm going to say switch to the next state. And then I'm going to make a function private void and call it switch to the next state. I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to pass this function a state or require it to be passed a state rather. I'm going to call it next state. And all this function does is it's going to switch the current state up top to the state we pass in. And now this will all make sense when you see how we actually set up our states. So let's say switch to next state. And we're gonna pass the next state. Okay, now all this is going to do is take in a state, it's going to run the logic on the state, and then whatever state that the current state returns, we're gonna switch that state. So for example, you're gonna have an idle state, and when your character, uh, when your enemy spots the player, He's going to switch from idle to chase player. And then when you're chasing a player, when you get within attack range, you're going to switch to the attack state. Now I'm going to type in run state machine up here in the update function. And we are going to start creating some of our actual states. So let's right click. I'm going to create a C sharp script, idle state. Right click, create C sharp script. I'm going to call this one chase state. And I'm going to right click, create a C sharp script, and call this one attack state. Now let's open up the idle state. Let's make it derive from state. I'm going to erase the update and start method. You're going to get an error. We're going to right click. We're going to click quick factorings. We're going to implement the abstract class because we have to implement this function. I'm going to erase that. And for now, I'm just going to say return this so it stops the error from showing up. But we're going to edit that momentarily. I'm going to do the same thing with the chase state and attack state. So I'm going to make them derive from state. And then I'm going to erase the update and start method. I'm going to right click quick factorings, implement the abstract class. I'm going to erase what's inside. And then we're going to say return this. And then again, one last time, I will do the same thing on the attack state. Okay, so now over here, let's go to our idle state. Let's make a public bool, and we're gonna call that can see the player. And then we're gonna make a variable of type chase state, and we're gonna call that chase state. Now that is the state we're gonna to wanna to switch to after we've theoretically found our player. So in this state, you would actually write some logic some detection logic you would use to find the player, and then you would change that bool to true. So then we would say, if we can see the player, we're gonna return the chase state, else we're gonna return this state. So you can see here how powerful this is, because if we have met the logic and we found a player and that bool turns out to be true, we will then switch to our chase state. And then on the chase state, we would go there and apply the same logic for the attack state. So we would say public attack state, attack state, and then we can make a bool, and we could call this public bool. We could call it something like is in attack range. 
and then we would run towards our player, and then when we're in the attack range, we could check off that bull, and then we could say, if is in attack range, then we could return the attack state and actually attack the player. If not, keep running the state and keep getting closer to the player. So we return this state over and over again. Now, I know I'm not actually writing the logic for running towards the player and attacking the player. If you want to see a video on that, I do do that in my Create Dark Souls and Unity series. If not, I can also do it from scratch in this series. If you would like me to, comment below. I can do a video on each of the states. Now, in the attack state, I'm going to say debug.log, I have attacked. And that will let us know we have gotten to our final state and we are now attacking the player. So, I'm going to save that. And we'll go back into the scene view here, and that is our state machine completed. Now, back in the state manager, let's make that state variable public so we can see what our current state is, and also adjust it from the inspector. I'm going to create an empty game object under my enemy. I'm going to call it states. I'm then going to create an empty game object for each of the states I want to place on them. I'm going to say idle state, and then I'm going to create one for chase state, and then I'm going to create one for the attack state. Now, you could do this a different way. You could even use scriptable objects if you wanted to. I just like doing it this way. I think it looks neat and it's tidy. So on the idle state empty game object, I'm going to add the idle state script. On the chase state empty game object, I'm going to add the chase state script. And on the attack state empty game object, I'm going to add the attack state script. So on the chase state, I will drag in my attack state. And on the idle state, I will drag in my chase state. And here on the enemy, I'm going to add the state manager. And the current state, we're going to start off on the idle state. So I'll drag that in. Excellent. Now if I hit play and I run up towards this enemy here, let's just get closer to him just for the sake of the video. If I go and click on the idle state and I check off the box, you will now see that we have switched to the chase state. So now if I go to the chase state and I tick the box that says we are in attack range over here, you will now see that we have switched to the attack state. And you can see there, there it is, attack state. So if you put the actual logic in these states to run towards your character and then play an animation to display an attack, you can see how this is a very clean and nice way to switch between different logic behaviors. Again, if you want to see the actual logic of chasing and finding a player and attacking, I have made a video set on that in my Create Dark Souls and Unity series. But if you would like me to create these states again from scratch, from the ground up on a clean Unity project, comment below and I can do a video on each of these states independently. Thank you for watching. If this has helped you get some understanding of the state machine, please drop a like, it does help get my video around, and don't forget to leave a comment to appease the YouTube algorithm gods. If you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon below. Until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>